Hello everyone. I'm going to present a tutorial in association rule mining. Um, in the first video we're going to see the basics, some theory, and then uh, in the uh, next video I'm going to show one example for later to show how to implement this in, in Python. So um, association rules are patterns like uh, A implies B or A R of B. Uh, like for example butter and cheese uh, implies bread or age greater than 25 and computer science career implies salary greater than 100k uh, so as you can see we can find this kind of rules in any, any database where we can transform the data into a set of binary variables is like a, if the, the variable is present or not. For example, if uh, there is butter in the transaction and there is cheese in the transaction, then it's likely to have bread in the same transaction. Or if the person answer the survey that uh, um, putting there that the age is greater than 25, that means that that answer is present, so it's part of the transaction as well. Um, so how we can, uh, or why we want to learn these kind of patterns in the in from data, right? Uh, one very typical application is in the supermarket purchases, because um, when we want to understand better the transaction or the patterns that are within transactions in a supermarket help us to take to make better decisions later better commercial decisions and also as i mentioned before to analyze survey answers and find patterns among all the answers from the from everyone in the in the database right and this could be applied to any other database as far as we transform the instances and the variables into binary variables. So uh, the application in a supermarket transaction is called market basket analysis and usually helps to analyze the habits of the clients, the purchase habits. So usually, for example, uh, find groups of products that uh, are sold together and with that you can improve your special offers let's say if you are creating a special offer putting together or creating a new pack of products with a lower price then if those products usually are not being sold together it's very likely that your offer is not going to be successful in that case means you're not going to improve the amount of sales but if you put the price lower that means that you basically lost money so, but in case when you put together products that are being usually sold together, then uh, you want to increase the volume because people will like your your offer, your package, and then uh, you want to make money basically. So, it's important to understand how people buy and usually what are the products that are being sold together. This is one of one of the main applications of association rule mining. So. We're going to see here some definitions. Um, what is an item set? Uh, it's basically one set of one or more items. Uh, for example, milk, uh, bread, and beer. Right? That's that's going to be a item set of size three. Um, we also define a K item set. It's basically an item set that contains K items. Uh, and again, for example, milk, bread, beer, and rice is a four item set. So the support count of an item set is basically the number of transactions that contain the item set. Let's say if the if milk, bread, and beer are present in 125 transactions, it means that that is uh, the support count of that item set, right? Somehow telling us the frequency of the item set. So in a very similar way, uh, the support of an item set is basically the same thing, it's just divided by the amount of transactions. So it's the, it's the relative frequency or the proportion of transactions that contain 
uh, milk, bread, and beer. So we are going to say that uh, one item set is frequent if its support is greater than a previously defined threshold, right? For example, we are going to say that we define as our support threshold 15%, then every transaction that has a support greater or equal than 15% is going to be considered as frequent, according to us. So we'll recall that an association rule is an expression or a pattern like X implies Y, where X and Y are item sets. So again, one example is milk and diapers implies uh, beer, for example. So how we can evaluate um, the association rules or what metrics we can use? Again, we use the support of a rule, but in this case, the support of a rule is the fraction of transactions that contain X and Y. So it's uh, putting together both item sets from the left and the right side. So for example, for the rule milk and diapers implies beer, then the support is going to be uh, counting the number of transactions that contain milk, diapers, and beer divided by uh, the number of transactions. So if, if for example, that is 0.4, it means that 40% of the transactions shown that milk, diapers, and beer are sold together. Right? This is very similar. It's, it's like the support of, of an item set, but in this case, is for the rule. Um, the confidence of a rule is telling us uh, the fraction of times items in Y appear in transactions that contain X. So let's again that for the same example, if the rule is milk, diapers, and beer, then the, the confidence is counting, I mean, the, the amount of or the support of the item set milk, diapers, and beer divided by the support of the item set milk and diapers. So in, in other words, it's like a, if we already know that a, trans, a transaction contains milk and diapers, what is the probability that it also contains beer, right? So if the confidence of this rule is 0.67, it means that 67% of the purchases that contain milk and diapers also contain beer. So we can see this as a way of calculating like a um, conditional probability of beer given milk and diapers and obtaining it from the transactions just by counting. So another very important metric is the lift of a rule. So the lift of, of a rule measures how much the likelihood, the likelihood of buying Y increases after knowing that X is also purchased. Why this is important? Let's say like we find that the rule uh, milk diapers imply beer is, uh, it, it has a, high, a very high confidence. So for example, that the probability of buying beer given that we saw someone buying milk and diapers is 90%. Before uh, jumping and celebrating that we found that pattern, we should check something else. It means like, what if beer it is sold a lot by itself? It means that even without knowing that a person bought milk and diapers, buying beer is very likely. That means that then... Uh, by seeing that the person bought milk and diapers, it didn't contribute too much in the, into the probability of buying beer, right? So it's basically measuring how much the probability increases after I realized that the customer bought milk and diapers, right? If that number is high, it means that then the rule is very important because we really found a very uh, relevant pattern, right? But if the number is not higher than one, it means that even though it's very likely to buy beer, when you buy milk and diapers, it is also, this is, 
equally likely that you're gonna buy beer if you didn't buy milk and diapers either, right? So, um, and how we, how we calculate the lift, what is basically the confidence of the rule divided by the support of Y, okay? So, um, again, here we can see that these fractions are basically telling us what is the ratio, the rate, the ratio between uh, assuming sort of like independence or not. It's like how connected is I, our items in Y, like how connected is the beer to the milk and diapers or how dependent is like. So if, if, we, are, if we were measuring this in, with probabilities, it's like uh, if we calculate the probability of beer given milk and diapers, how different is compared with just with the probability of beer. So then we can have a grasp of the contribution of beers and, I'm sorry, of the contribution of milk and diapers over the beer, right? So as an example here, uh, this last term, again, is telling us uh, how much affects or contributes knowing x before calculating the probability of y. Okay, here we are with the, with the example. So uh, if the confidence of the, of the rule milk diapers imply beer is like three times the support of beer, it means that then this ratio is going to be three and the likelihood of buying beer increases three times when we know that milk and diapers were also bought. Okay, so that's a very relevant pattern that we found in the data.